right, welcome to our webinar on 1099s and Business Central. I am David Beatty from Trendsoft. And with us today, we also have Robin Phillips, who is our resident 1099 expert with Business Central. And so she's gonna walk you through some of the basic processes of uh, interview process and 1099 with Business Central. So Robin, we're so excited to have you and take it away. Thanks, David. I'm excited to be here and I really appreciate everybody taking the time to view this video because it is 1099 time. So um, there are a couple of assumptions that I want to get out of the way uh, that I'm making before we run into the video. The first assumption I'm making is that you know what 1099s are and you know what the regulations are with filing them. The second assumption I'm making is that you're familiar with Business Central and you can maneuver that uh, platform well. So there are three things that we're going to cover today. The first thing that I want us to get through is looking at our vendor records and verifying the vendor information is correct. The second thing I want us to do is check our vendor ledger entries just in case we find any issues while we're checking our vendors that we need to correct those entries. We're going to show you how to make those corrections. And then the third thing that we want to do is do a test print of 1099s on an IRS form. So we're going to walk through that. And these are the three things that I want to cover to make sure that we're doing this today. As soon as you finish this video, you close it out and you start doing these things. Uh, once we get those nailed out, I am going to at the end just show you quickly how to print 1099 forms um, so that you're ready and good to go. So I'm going to be going kind of quickly. Feel free to pause or replay this video as you need to. I've got an information sheet that we're going to send out with the video where I've gone ahead and taken the notes for you. So don't feel like you have to feverishly take notes. We've got that for you. We'll get it to you. So just follow along with me. So David, if you don't mind, I'm ready to go ahead and share my screen and let's dive in unless I missed anything. There we go. Yeah, sounds good. All right, so I have a, a demo company here set up so that I can just give you um, a few of these fly-through items. The first thing that we want to do is go to our vendors. So we all know that best practice when we get a new vendor is to request a W-9 from them and get them set up in our system prior to processing any invoices or payments. Um, so what we want to do is grab those W-9s wherever you keep them. I know some of you keep them attached to your vendor records in Business Central. You might keep them in Trend Docs. You might keep them in your own platform. Whatever you do, just go ahead and grab that so that we can verify our vendor card information. So I got my vendor list. And from here, I'm going to go to a vendor that I know is a 1099 vendor. And I just want to verify that the name on their card matches up with the W-9 that the address and contact information all lines up. And then I wanna scroll down here to the payments portion of the card. And here I just wanna make sure that I have the correct 1099 code in the IRS 1099 code field. <laughs> so Business Central um, populates these in the background for you. And with each upgrade, they're gonna be updated if there are any changes. So you don't have to worry about managing this list you do just have to worry about picking the right one from the list. So I have this one selected and it's correct. And we wanna make sure that we've got the tax ID number in this payment tab as well. If you find while you're out here editing the vendor card that a 1099 code that should have been populated was not, please keep in mind that when you make a change to this 1099 code, it takes effect um, from the moment you make the change forward. So if the change that you made also needs to be applied to 2023 entries, then we need to do that in the vendor ledger entries, which is a good lead on to part number two, where we're going to talk about that. So this vendor looks great and we wanna just do that. However, you can manage doing it, whether it's a quick spot check, if, depending on your number of vendors, if you wanna go through all of your 1099 vendors, that's up to you, but just make sure that you have your information updated. So that is step one. Step two that we wanna talk about is actually just doing a check of the entries to make sure that they're correct. A great report that's gonna help you be able to do this, you can get to from this vendor list that I'm on. So if we'll come out here to the reports um, selection in the ribbon, and we're gonna go to general and then vendor 1099 information. I like this report because it gives you a breakdown and I'm just gonna set this for the year. Oops, and not talk while I'm doing it because I'll mess up, okay. 
So what I love about this report is it gives you a breakdown of all of the vendors that have a 1099 code selected on their vendor card. And if they have any entries for the year that you put in your filter, they're going to populate. Don't worry, if one populates that doesn't meet the thresholds, say you have a vendor that you've only paid $300, so they haven't met that $600 threshold, it is going to show up on this report, but it's not going to show up when you actually run your 1099s. But I think that's a good way to catch errors. So if you see one and you think, oh, they, I think I paid them more, or that vendor's on this list and they shouldn't be, this is a good starting point to kind of narrow in on some things that might not look correct. So just wanted to show you that. So while we were on that report, I noticed that we're going to pick on this vendor a lot. It's like a glove. I noticed that I don't think his entries are correct. So I want to go review the vendor ledger entries for this vendor and see what corrections I can make. Now, we all know in Business Central, you can get to different places a few different ways. So I'm just going into the vendor card, hitting on that balance and closing out open. So I have all the vendor ledger entries for that vendor here that are open or that are no longer open once I took that filter away. You can also go up to the search field and do vendor ledger entries and filter from there, however you prefer. So um, this vendor just has a few entries and I want to scroll to the right. And what I wanna focus in on are the fields that say IRS 1099 code and IRS 1099 amount. These fields are what drive the calculation in Business Central for the 1099 filings. Um, one thing that I want to point out that's a little bit different in, in way, the way we would think of it, 1099 is calculated by payments that we make to vendors. But in Business Central, the information is stored on the invoice. So when you pull up one like this, you'll notice that this 1099 information is tied to the invoice. Um, and that's where I want to make changes if I need to make them. It's not until a payment comes through that's applied to that invoice that it gets calculated by Business Central to populate on a 1099 when you generate them for the year. So just kind of counterintuitive. Don't let that trip you up. If you do get confused or you're not quite sure which field you need to edit, please reach out to us. That's why we're here for you and support. We're happy to walk through this with you. Um, so I know in this guide that I should have applied this 2000 to the IRS 1099 as well. So I'm going to come up here to edit list. And a lot of our vendor ledger entries, we can't edit things right, but there are a few exceptions and 1099 fields are one of those exceptions. Don't fret. If you hit edit here, it's not going to let you edit something that you shouldn't. So we're going to go ahead and select the correct code. And then I'm going to apply the amount. And as I tab out, that's going to save out in the vendor ledger entries for me. And it's going to update the records from there. So if when you're out here editing your vendor ledger entries, you find that maybe let's use the example of that you added a 1099 code and it wasn't applied to the 2020, any of the 2023 entries for a vendor and your vendor has a lot of transactions, please don't take the time to do that manually. Contact Transoft Support so that we can help you get that done a little quicker. There are several options that we have. We can edit in Excel and walk you through how to do that or we can deploy something that would do that for you. So definitely contact Transaf Support. We're happy to help make your to-do list a little bit smaller this month. So that was our number two. Number three, we want to test print a 1099. This one, I probably should have made number one. We want you to do this right now <laughs> because um, if you've changed printers in the last year, or maybe today your printer has just decided it wants to do things differently, the columns can line up differently. You're printing on a 1099 form that's provided by the IRS and it is programmed in Business Central to line up, but it might not be perfect. So let's do a test print to make sure that we have what we need when we're out here. I'm actually gonna stay in this um, vendor so that we keep things in line. Again, you know that we can go many different places in Business Central by many ways. So I can do it from the vendor card, I can actually come back out here for the vendor list and do reports from here and go to general and then find this. What I'm looking for is the vendor 1099 with the code that I'm wanting to work with. So I'm working with the miscellaneous codes. So I'm going to select that report. 
We'll keep it at calendar year of 2023 since that's what we're working on. But what I want us to really be sure that we do is see here where it says test print. Let's select that and toggle it over so that we can do a test print. Now, when you're doing this, you're just going to go print and select your printer. But I just want to preview it today so that I can show you what it looks like. So this is what's going to print on your document. And it basically fills out any possible field to the link that's possible in the form. So if any of these X's don't line up with the box that it should, then you need to call us that support so that we can help you get this lined out before you have to send these out at the end of the month. So again, important to do now. We don't want to run into a situation where there are limited resources or limited time to be able to get these printed and sent out. We want to help you now. So definitely check it out and call us. I don't think I can hammer that home any more than I have, right, David? <laughs> So That's that good. is what we That's wanted. Right. <laughs> okay. So those are the three things that we really wanted to definitely cover. We validated our vendor information. We have reviewed and corrected vendor ledger entries, and we've completed a successful test print of 1099s. So we're ready to print all of our forms. Um, what we can do to do that is we're going to use the exact same report. So we're going to go back out to reports general, and depending on how many different types of 1099 vendors will depend on how many of these you need to use. So if you have a miscellaneous, if you have interest, whatever you need to print, you'll select that report and test all of these. <laughs> so do that test print for anyone that you'll have to generate. Um, but then we're going to go out here and we'll just put in our 2023 and we'll do, again, I'll do a preview just for now so that you can see the preview. But here's an example of what we'll print through the printer onto the 1099 form. So once you get that done and you run them through twice, you are good to go and you've completed 1099s and you can knock that off the list of all of your January to-dos, <laughs> right? It's a party. Um, one thing I do wanna mention quickly is that um, this year for 2023, the IRS has lessened the threshold for e-filing uh, or for filing requirements for information filings. So for 1099s, it used to be if you had 250 or more information filings you had to do with the IRS, you were required to e-file those. For 2023, if you have 10 or more, you are required to e-file those. It's a huge jump, right? So obviously they're wanting us to e-file. <laughs> If you have not, if this is news to you, you haven't heard this yet, then I urge you to go to the IRS's website and do the steps that you need to do to be able to file electronically. There are step-by-step -step instructions. We will have that site linked on the information sheet that we have attached. Um, there's step-by-step -step instructions and um, a transmission code that you have to submit to be able to do it electronically through the IRS. So I hope this is not new news to you, but if it is, let's get on that now too. So I really appreciate everybody's time today. Again, this was a quick, but we just wanted to use this as an opportunity to just get us started and get it going so that we can serve you better in January. And David, I'm going to hand it over to you unless you caught something I missed. No, that's awesome. And uh, Robin, I love your 1099 dance that you were doing. At yeah. The end. <laughs> Did it. So hopefully we made this a nice, simple reminder for you guys, and uh, this will be helpful. If you're working on Business Central and you need help with this process, then Trendsoft is your partner, guys. So we're going to put a little contact information just for a minute at the end of this video. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Oh, I did want to mention this is all um, this is all test data. So you know, any names are just pure coincidence, right? This is if you couldn't tell by looking at the names, it's all it's all test data. But thank you so much, Robin, for guiding us through that and uh, for being our 1099 guru here at Trendsoft. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you guys. And uh, right here at the end of the video, you're going to see our website and some contact information. And um, good luck with your 1099s. Give us a call. Thanks. Thank you.